Hi, welcome to Eman 5. This week we're going to start with a case. A 68-year-old male presents to the ED complaining of a GI bleed. He'll note mild, crampy, diffuse abdominal pain over the last day and three episodes of maroon colored emesis. Your exam is significant for normal vital signs, very mild non-focal abdominal tenderness with no peritoneal signs, and a rectal exam that is only notable for chemical positive brown stool. In your head, you start to formulate a plan that may consist of a combination of checking some blood work and perhaps even starting a proton pump inhibitor. When a family member interrupts you to ask, is there any way that this could be related to the aneurysm repair that he had had one year ago? You, being the excellent physician you are, know that this information may indeed have an impact on what's going on with this gentleman. And if you're really good, you'll know that your differential diagnosis must now include aortoenteric fistula, which is what we're going to talk about this week on EMN5. Now, what is an aortoenteric fistula? As you may already know, an aortoenteric fistula is a communication between the aorta and the GI tract. And it was first described by a man named Sir Cooper in the 1800s with a triad of GI bleed, abdominal pain, and pulsatile mass in the abdomen. Now, out of all of these, GI bleeding is going to be your most common presenting symptom, with only really 11% of individuals having all three of these. So when does this occur? In cases of primary aortoenteric fistula, there's usually some underlying aortic pathology, such as an aortic aneurysm. The fistula is created one of two ways, from the gut or intestinal side, Cancers, ulcers, foreign bodies, diverticula, all have the potential for erosion through the lumen of the gut and into the blood vessel by way of an inflammatory process that results. Or from the aortic end, any sort of leak, rupture, pulsatile pressure, or inflammation or infection of the aortic wall can result in communication between the aorta and nearby enteric lumen, which used to be a lot more common in the days of high incidences of tuberculosis and syphilis in our country. The other way you can get an aorta enteric fistula in the way that is much more common today is the result of prior aortic repair. And contributing factors again come from both vascular and enteric etiology. Infection is going to be the biggest etiology here, and that can result from seeding from a bacteremia and inoculation of the graft when it's first placed. Physical forces can play a role with pulsatile pressure against a bowel wall from the external blood vessel or erosion through the vascular wall by the endograft. From the bowel end, the usual actors are at play, including peptic ulcer disease and others, as well as any bowel injury that might occur during the initial aortic repair itself. Fistulas that result from these processes are called secondary aortic enteric fistulas. Now your typical causes of GI bleeding, peptic ulcer disease, gastritis, colitis, neoplasm, hemorrhoids even, those are still more common than aorta enteric fistula. Yet the kicker remains that you're going to see that fistula formation is more common in those with a history of aortic pathology than those who don't. And if left untreated, results in a 100% mortality. So anyone with aortic pathology, whether it be a AAA or history of aortic surgery, presents with any type of GI bleed, whether it be upper, lower, minuscule, or massive, you have to at least consider aorta enteric fistula. And in these cases, stability will help determine your disposition and workup. If stable, get a CT with IV contrast, a vascular surgery consult, and make preparations for any resuscitation that might be needed. There are some proponents of endoscopy as the next step, more so to rule out other major causes of GI bleeding. However, it seems that more of the literature has been leaning towards getting a CT first, given that the resolution of our scanners are getting better and better. If your patient is unstable, however, you've got to start resuscitating them with a low threshold to activate your massive transfusion protocol and do what you can to get them to the operating room, because they are sick and they're going to get sicker. So to sum it up with some take-home points. Number one, again, any aortic history any GI bleed, you have to be thinking about aorta enteric fistula, which can occur at any point in the GI tract, most commonly in the duodenum, and in any amount, as even smaller bleeds from aorta enteric fistulas can herald much larger bleeds to come. Stability guides disposition. Please involve your surgery friends early. Here are a list of my sources. And as always, thank you for watching Yemen 5. This is TJ Wilniak. See you next week.